when I, I stand before you today. Uh, sorry. Somewhat confused. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This from the Money Magazine website, CNNMoney.com. More than half of delinquent homeowners whose mortgages were modified earlier this year. You know, they did that, right? They went to people who couldn't pay their mortgages and they said, all right, we're going to modify the terms of the agreement so that you will get out of default. You knew that, right? Maybe you were one of them. Yeah. Well, it says here that more than half of delinquent homeowners whose mortgages were modified earlier this year ended up... Here's a word I've never seen before. Redefaulting within six months, according to a top bank regulator. Some 53% of borrowers with loans modified in the first three months of 2008 and 51% of those with loans modified in the second quarter could not keep up with payments within six months, according to U.S. Controller John Dugan, who spoke at a housing conference. The report, which will be released in full next week. You see this story? <laughs> I'm not kidding. Covers nearly 35 million loans, worth a total of $6 trillion, or 60% of all primary mortgages in the United States. So we're not talking about a small sample here. This represents 60% of all primary mortgages. It says here, the high redefault rate raises concerns about the long-term effectiveness of loan modifications, which many are pushing as a key solution to the nation's financial crisis. A record 1.35 million homes are in foreclosure. While the number of borrowers who have fallen behind on their payments soared to a record 6.99%, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association. Meanwhile, 1.7 million homeowners have been helped in 2008 through the Hope Now Alliance, a coalition of lenders, servicers, investors, and counselors working with delinquent borrowers on modifications and repayment plans. Dugan said the Office of the Controller of the Currency is asking servicers for more details on the loans and is reported to determine what went wrong. I'm going to tell you what went wrong. The people we're helping are deadbeats. They are deadbeats who shouldn't have been buying houses in the first place. These are people who could not afford to buy a house. These are people who would not have bought a house unless they got these ridiculously, ridiculously easy terms to get a loan. The very low interest rates, coupled with these easy terms and mortgages that said things like you don't have to state your income or you don't have to have a job or you don't have to put any money down, these are people who had no business buying homes. And because they had no business buying homes... They have no business keeping their homes either. Oh, we're going to lose our home. They're going to take our home. Shut up. You didn't deserve to have a home anyway. You've heard me on this program talk about my salary, and I make a good living. And thank goodness I still make a good living. And I've made a good living for a long time. But, you know, when I first came to Los Angeles in 1988, over 20 years ago, I did not buy a house. I also did not buy a house in 1989. I did not buy one in 1990. I did not buy one in 1991. I did not buy one in 1992. Didn't buy one in 1993 or 1994. Didn't buy one in 1995. I didn't buy one in 1996. I finally bought a house in 1997. After my salary had gone way up. 
after I had saved and saved and saved a fortune so I could put down a big down payment and after I could afford to get earthquake insurance to properly insure the home for fire and flood and what have you so that I could pay the property taxes the cost of maintaining the house so that I didn't have to uh, do what my dad used to do. You know, if the uh, pipe would leak, he just let it leak till he had mold problems, until he had erosion around the walls and what have you. I was determined when I bought a house, I was going to buy a house when I could afford to live in it properly and not a minute before. Many times I had to delay the purchase of real estate because I've owned four houses. And I have had to, la to delay the purchase of real estate because unqualified people who had no business buying homes were buying homes in droves and driving up the price to more than those houses were worth. I have wanted a vacation home for years. And I've certainly been able to afford one. I first had the idea to get a vacation home back in the late 90s. But I did not buy a vacation home in 1998 or 1999 or 2000. I just bought my first house and I, uh, my first house in LA and I didn't have a down payment together and I wasn't able to afford to properly insure the home and what have you. In 2001, we had 9-11. Not a good time to buy real estate, I thought. In 2002, mortgage rates hit record lows. And then uh, the uh, bubble started to inflate. And all the unqualified morons ran out there buying houses they couldn't afford. So I didn't buy a house in 02. I didn't buy my vacation home in 03. I didn't buy my dream property in 04. 2005, 2006, 2007. I waited 10 years until 2008. Why? Because the real estate bubble had burst, foreclosures were up, prices were falling, I had put away 25% to put down on the house, and I had the money to properly insure the house and maintain it. Now, this may all sound boring to you. But the fact is, if everybody did it that way, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in now. That's why we're in the mess we're in now. And now you see how many deadbeats there really are living in homes, and we're all feeling sorry for these deadbeats. I mean, look at the percentage. This is ridiculous. More than half of the people who couldn't make their mortgage payments and who then got their mortgages modified to make the terms easier, the payments lower, the interest rates lower, they've defaulted again because they are losers and they are deadbeats, and they are a big part of the reason we're in the tank right now. You can sit there and blame it on mortgage companies. You can sit there and blame it on the government. You can blame it on realtors. You can blame it on banks. You can blame it on subprime lenders. But somebody had to pull the trigger on these purchases. And in most cases, people who knew damn well they couldn't afford to buy a house but were buying one anyway are the people who are now in the soup, and they've dragged us into the soup with them. I do not feel sorry for them, and I don't think we should be modifying their loans again. You know, it's time to, uh, to foreclose on these people and send them where they belong, back to tiny apartments. That's where they belong. Am I wrong? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. Now with the shortest commercial breaks of all time. More phone calls. We're moving along faster. More chances for you to get in. At 1-800-5800-TOM. 
And you now hear us six days a week. Saturdays 2 until 6 on 97.1 FM Talk here in Los Angeles. Join us this Saturday. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. All right. Uh, they've done a study and they have found that more than half of all the the borrowers they've rescued with those so-called toxic mortgages, guess what? They modified the loans to make them easier to pay off, and now the people have defaulted again. Cut these losers loose. This is Randy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Randy. You know, these uh, subprime borrowers and the people that can't afford their house, how stupid can they be? I mean, I live in an apartment by myself, and... uh, I can't afford a house by myself, but I would never buy a house. Even if I'm going to tell you said, how stupid they can be. If they <laughs> if they weren't so stupid, they wouldn't be subprime borrowers. Let's just be honest. Subprime borrowers are either stupid, lacking education or talent. Uh, they are, uh, uh, or otherwise, they are dishonest because they have no intention or no ability to pay back the loans they take out. Oh, I completely agree, Tom. You know, I uh, this uh, co- uh, you we're talking about the uh, being drug into the soup with these uh, people. I'm just about to graduate from college, and now there's no uh, finance jobs out there for me because everybody's got a hiring freeze. That's uh, that. By the way, uh, the people who uh, didn't go to college, I hope they're seeing what's happening now on the unemployment front. You know, they deserve to be in their uh, ghetto apartments or even on the gutter, for all I care. Well, uh, you know, you say ghetto apartments. I don't know if that was a racial comment. All I'm going to say is that uh, most subprime borrowers are white. They didn't necessarily come from ghettos, but they certainly, uh, you know, came from apartments. And uh, they, oh, well, you know, we, we deserve to have a house. We need to have a house. Uh, no, oh, they I don't. You know what? You need to have the things you can afford and to do without the things you cannot afford. Oh, totally, Tom, totally. Well, thank you very much for taking my call. Thank you. Appreciate it, Randy. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here is Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. I'm out here in Asheville, North Carolina. I used to live up in Seattle in the summertime, listen to you up there. Also listen to you down in Scottsdale, Arizona. So uh, looking forward to getting you on the radio or XM or something sometime. So I don't have to just listen to you online. Or call your local station, uh, Westwood One and CBS are proud to present the Tom Likas Show. You know, I'm really kind of upset about this situation, too, because I've always lived within my means. And I would have loved to have, you know, big house on the hill but you know i couldn't afford to pay for it and i didn't go out and get a mortgage that was you know over my head and i think that uh the problem i have here is that people like you and me who have always saved and planned and uh, done things in a prudent manner are being punished and being forced to pay for the losers among us you know i i agree with you completely and you know, I'm 44 now. You know, I I have lived within my means. I've waited tables. I bartended. You know, now I have a very good job selling copiers. But in the past, I have served, you know, people that just want to keep up with the Joneses and live in the big houses. And, you know, now it's just, it's just frustrating because now I feel like, I'm having to bail them out, but yet I've lived for the last 20 years in small apartments, and, you know, I haven't really felt like I've been suffering, but I would have liked to live in a large house, and, you know, now, why should we have to bail everybody out that's lived beyond their means? I don't feel sorry for them whatsoever. I I totally agree with you, Brian. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Good afternoon, Tom. How you doing? Great. You know, you bring this subject up and it just makes my blood boil. I bought my house in 2004, did my homework. They offered me a stated income loan. I politely declined it. 
I've got a fixed interest rate, slightly higher, but thinking that, you know, some, it's going to blow up someday. Sure enough, it did. And now the housing prices have fallen so far that now I'm upside down. My house is actually worth less than what I paid for. And that just drives me crazy. These people complaining about, oh, I'm going to lose my house. Good. You screwed up. You made a bad decision. You didn't do your homework. You deserve to be out on the street. No doubt about it. You know, it just it just makes my blood boil that now I'm looking at some sort of loan modification so I can get back to some sense of normalcy, you know? It's like, now I'm screwed because of them, and I did my homework. I don't think that we should be bailing them out, giving them handouts again, and especially if they defaulted twice the second time around. Oh, two strikes, you're out. You're done. Yeah, that's so how I feel. Out on the street. Yeah, I, I, I think it's really outrageous that we are keeping a bunch of deadbeats and losers uh, in these homes they did not deserve to own in the first place. Oh, I totally, totally agree. Jim, thank you for that. Let me get Bryce here on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. You know, I was just looking uh, this weekend at six houses in Lomita, and I just want to say I want to do my little rant. I'm kind of happy that there's a lot of losers out there because I'm going to profit off of them. However, you know, it seems like the losers are are growing in numbers these days, man. Oh, well, there are uh, certainly a lot of them, or a lot of them have been skating by uh, because for a long time people perceived the economy to be good. And yeah. we were awash in cash for reasons I've never understood. Yeah. And uh, now uh, the chickens are coming home to roost. Yeah, you know, it's like the Wussification of America. Make these people pay pay the price. Can you stop bailing them out? That's uh, the only way they're going to learn, Tom. I totally agree with you. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. It is uh, great to talk to you, a long-time listener. Uh, this is going to make your blood boil even more. The whole reason that uh, the government and banks are trying to get people to stay in their homes is not because they care at all about the people. It's to keep the banks from having to take massive, massive losses that are going to make them all insolvent and put them out of business. The uh, Wall Street already got killed this summer, but the actual banks, the bigger banks, are, are in deeper trouble. And the real story is if somebody gets uh, their mortgage adjusted and they stay in their home, they're actually paying more on the mod modified mortgage than they would pay to rent. But they're the not place. they're not paying because, as you see, more than half of them now are defaulting again. Yeah, absolutely, totally agree. But even if the, even if they could make that payment, that's more. The payment that they would have to make is more than it would be if they simply got out of the home, like foreclosed upon, and then bought it back on the secondary market because the homes themselves have dropped 50% in value. So the whole thing is just, this is all designed to keep the banks in business and to keep the banks from failing. They are losers, you're absolutely right, but they're even bigger losers because they don't realize that they'd be better off if they just foreclosed, got foreclosed upon and either rented or bought a, a cheaper home uh, uh, or the same home after it's dropped in price. Right. So of course, the question is, could they get a mortgage after defaulting, after being foreclosed? And the answer is probably no. Probably not right now, but when you have 3 million people that are getting foreclosed upon in one year, hey, banks need to do business. They will find a way to loan you money. They, I mean, it's not going to be the scarlet letter that it used to be. I mean, I work with a guy who got foreclosed upon, and they're calling him up trying to more, uh, modify, and I'm telling him not to do it because he, and I show him, like, I built a financial model to show him exactly. And, you know, I'm just like you. I, did, I, I never bought a home. I'm 36 years old. I have a million bucks in the bank. I still don't buy a home because they're way overpriced. And if you think that the real estate market is bad now, wait till next year, because next year the Bay Area uh, of California is going to get absolutely crushed, because they weren't subprime. They were uh, alt-A's, they were option arms, they were prime borrowers that are all going to start getting foreclosed upon. It is going to be an absolute nightmare. Uh, this is not over. The pipeline of bad mortgages goes on for, goes on for years. Uh, I work in financial services. I know exactly what I'm talking about. The, the economy is going to be worse. The Dow Jones is going to be down at 5,000 within, within 12 months. We're in deep trouble. This, this is really bad. Well, it is bad, no doubt. How bad it is, unfortunately, we're going to find out as we go. Larry on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Tom. How are you doing today? How are you doing? 
How you doing? Hey, Tom, this is Larry from New York. Uh, Townsend Avenue, six seconds. remember me? It only took six seconds. Uh, you have Townsend, Townsend Avenue in the Bronx? Yeah, I came, I talked to you one time, and uh, I tried to take have you take me out New York style, and you played uh, Do the Hustle or something. <laughs> hey, but Tom, let me tell you, you know, back in the day, Tom, when, when families, you know, suffered and... Um, People were having hard times. You know, I remember when families drew together. People helped each other out. And, and, and uh, sometimes we had, you know, like uh, uh, 15 people living in my grandparents' apartment. Because, you know, uh, when, when families, I think at a time like this, Tom, people should get together and try and work out situations within their families to make things work out. Instead of throwing people to the curb and not helping, especially within the family I'm talking about. Well, what's happened now since you were a kid, Larry, and since I was a kid, are that uh, people don't live around their families in many cases, just like you don't live around your family anymore, Larry. You left uh, the Bronx and came to California. Uh, you know, when you were a kid, uh, people lived on the same block as their parents and their grandparents lived. Yeah, that's that's true. You got a point there. So it's a lot harder to be helping people out. Now what happens is you live in California and your mother lives in an assisted living facility in Florida. And uh, everybody is somewhere else. So, uh, you know, it's very nice to be nostalgic about those days when everybody helped each other. But guess what? I just don't think it's so plausible anymore. Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Shorter commercial breaks. Taking the calls faster. More chances for you to get on the air at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Anna is calling in from Visalia, California, listening to the online stream. Anna, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I just wanted to um, let people know unfortunately, people are losing their homes. Yes, I understand. But there's the thing that public doesn't realize, there are things that are called a deed in lieu of foreclosure. You've got Bank of America who just got some of this bailout money, and they're not willing to help out their people who have their loans with them. The best way to do it, do a deed in lieu of foreclosure. You give the property back to the bank, and you don't have that foreclosure negativity on your credit report. Are there disadvantages to doing that? to doing this, Tom, is you can't walk into any escrow company or title company to have them do that for you. You have to know what you're doing, in a sense, and do all the paperwork yourself and go down to your local county recorder's office and file it. And basically, you're walking away from the situation, putting that back onto the bank. But doesn't that uh, show up as a negative report on your credit? <laughs> you know what? It would show up as somewhat of a negative report, but as far as giving the house, it's, it's basically like a voluntary repo so to speak right but a repo is not good uh, on your credit no you know if you do a voluntary versus an involuntary it looks a little better on your credit yeah it's a negative hit on your credit i understand that but it's a big one no it is it is but the the, the sign of the times right now people are going to go in the next couple of years and want to buy when the market's down and they'll look back and go okay well look where we're at 2008 was a horrible year for everybody yeah, um, I uh, I do not feel sorry for people losing their homes. I don't. And it is not because I don't feel sorry for people in trouble or people in need. Mm -hmm. uh, it is that I don't feel sorry for people who knew better. Well, well, Tom, if, if, if I could just give you a little bit of background on me. I used to work in the real estate business. I, I've seen these loan officers sell these incredible loans to people. Why? Because they just wanted the money. They didn't care that these borrowers were not going to be able to make ends meet or pay their mortgage payment. It was all Yeah, but, the, but they end. knew they couldn't make ends meet. You know, I am tired of putting the responsibility on others. The people who bought homes they couldn't afford have to take responsibility. Most definitely. I agree with you. I agree Let's with you. Let's stop treating them like victims. That These are people, when they had a stated income loan and they overstated their income, oh, yeah. who lied to get a loan to buy a house they couldn't afford. Oh, I agree. 
So I why are we now treating them like victims? They victimize the rest of us who are responsible. Those of us who don't buy houses until we can afford them. Those of us who save. Those of us right. who plan. Those That's of right. us who take on extra work, extra jobs. Those of us who sacrifice and don't buy expensive cars or expensive clothes. Those of us who live below our means in Most order definitely. in order to uh, to have a good credit rating and who check our credit rating on a regular basis. Oh, yeah. They are penalizing us. Us. I don't feel sorry for them. We are the victims. We who are responsible are the victims of the irresponsible. And the people losing their homes are not responsible. They are irresponsible. I agree. Wholeheartedly agree with you, Tom. You know, and just because a salesman came along and sold them a loan... Uh, you know, they the, the, should have known what they were getting themselves into. They knew. It. Not only should have known, they did know. Yeah. They um, didn't care. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, there are people who've called this show saying, well, well, you know, it's the American dream, and I deserve to have a house. No, you don't. No, if you can't afford the American dream to, to have that lifestyle and have that house, you don't deserve it. Absolutely. Part of the American dream is going out and working for it. It's it not delivered to your front door like the publisher's <laughs> clearinghouse prize patrol. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You gotta That's work. Right. You don't. You don't go in and lie about your income and get a loan you can't afford to pay back. Oh no, agree. And I am so tired of these people being portrayed as victims. They're not the victims. The responsible people, the savers, the planners, the investors, they are the victims because they will have to pay for the mistakes of the lazy and the deadbeats. I agree. I totally agree with you, Tom. Thank you, Anna. Take care, hon. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Daniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. All right, Dan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Father. Hi. Yes, you know, I work at a law firm in downtown LA, and some attorneys at my firm have started doing these loan modifications for some of these people that have fallen behind. And I'll tell you, about 90% of the people that fell behind, they they just threw up their hands and said, oh, well, we fell behind, so they've been living it up, eating dinner every night, going out, spending their money. So now uh, these people, even if they were to get a modification, they don't have the money. Well, we don't have the money, but we want to stay in our house anyway. These guys are losers. They deserve to be thrown out of their ear. Um, and also, out of 60 files, not even one loan has been uh, approved for modification. Okay? Out of what? Uh, out of 60 loans, out of 60 uh, open files, not even one loan one phone has been approved for for modification by the banks in order uh, in other words it's been modified so these people can make a, a lower payment well but um, you see the story about the people who have gotten modified loans more than half of them default again yeah well these people are deadbeats they have they're bad at their finances they live beyond their means i mean giving them a second chance is not going to make a difference i i don't want to give them a second chance and i'm tired of them being betrayed as victims i agree with you father can you please blow me up yes yes i can One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Jason on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Dad. Son, how are you? I'm good. I love your topic. I completely, one hundred percent, unequivocally agree with you because these are people who, first of all, were up leveraged to their eyeballs in credit card debts, uh, car the loan finances on cars, things like that. Then they went ahead, and even when they were just making ends meet with their homes. They would refinance under the guise of getting uh, an adjustable rate mortgage because of the lower rate, which they know is going to adjust in two years anyway, right, to a higher interest rate most of the time. And now their loan-to-value ratio has gone up. So now they're that much closer to losing their home. Now, I've seen people who've reached 90 95% loan-to-value ratio of their home, and it's all debt that they just tacked onto their home. And they knew going into it that they were wrong. Of course they knew. That's why you're called subprime, is because you have a low credit score and you're not trusted enough by the banks to do it. So now with, uh, with what was it, uh, was it the Clinton era, Tom, that had the, the give everybody home type of thing? Well, it was not on? just the Clinton era. I mean, uh, there's been uh, people... Uh lobbying for a long time to make to make homes more affordable. Well, the way you make homes more affordable is you stop selling them to deadbeats, thereby artificially pushing the price up. Exactly. Exactly. 
So these people ran into problems. It was their own fault. It's time. On the solution, I, I, they, they have it so backwards. The solution was not giving cheaper loans to deadbeats so they could buy houses more affordably. The solution is not to sell houses to deadbeats, to make loans for deadbeats impossible to get so the responsible people can afford to buy homes at reasonable prices. That's how it's done. Didn't you get, first get your loan for, like, uh, your home loan for, like, above 15% when you first bought in, like, the early 90s, 80s? I or, put I put 20% down. Yeah, that oh, on your home? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, but you probably had immaculate credit because you actually saved and paid your bills on time. Right. And made sure. Exactly. Ah, uh, take a lesson from Tom, my friends. I do feel bad for you, but seriously, a lesson hard learned. A lesson hard learned. All right, Jason, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Ron on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Long time listener, first time caller. Doing great. Good, good. Hey, just wanted to basically make a comment about the uh, loan modification scenario. There's two sides to every story. Uh, the first side, of course, is, you know, people are deadbeats, obviously. They're not going to, if they can't afford to do it, they shouldn't have got in the loan in the first place. But the second side is if the people actually can't afford it or can't afford it its now current value, banks aren't willing to do the modifications. The, the, I mean, what I've seen it come across my desk is things like, for example, if a person had a $3,500 mortgage payment, the bank would say, okay, we'll modify your loan for $150 less, not really actually helping out that individual, even though the house has actually dropped at 50, 50% loan to value. Uh, you've got uh, HUD that's made some changes recently. Um, I'm not sure if you guys heard the Senate committee today. But wait a minute. Why should, we, why should we be helping people out who couldn't afford to buy the houses in the first place? Well, technically speaking, Tom, it's, it's like a credit card. You know how Discover sends you an application in the mail, you fill it out, and they send you back a letter saying, hey, thank you very much, but you don't qualify? Pretty much that's what the lender should have done. Lenders put out so many different products out there. I mean, have you heard of a loan called the NINA program? That's a no-income, no-asset loan. If you didn't have a no-income, no-asset loan, even for an individual that had a 700 FICO score but only made $23,000 a year, you couldn't qualify that individual on a full documentation loan. Some of these people went out and they did investment. 20% of the foreclosures that are going on right now are actually investment property. You know, Fannie Mae currently has about 77% of the market that's $5.2 trillion in loans that's come out. In those loans, they estimate an estimate of 8 million loans will go into foreclosure within the next four years. 8 million, Tom. That's huge. So being that the banks don't want to move on this as far as modifying these folks, that's going to be a bigger detriment to everybody. But well, isn't, it, isn't it in their best interest to modify the loans, if only because banks don't want to be stuck with trillions of dollars in unsold real estate, do they? Oh, well, see, that's a misconception. We just handed them $700 billion. We just gave their insurance company, AIG, $139 billion for anybody who's going to default on a loan, being that they're already covered. Anything that happens right now, Secretary Paulson, uh, you know, the Bush that's in place, uh, Barack Obama coming in, every, he's already mentioned, I'm going to keep on throwing money until this actually burns out. All they're going to do is keep burning our money. But... The, as far as the modifications go, they can just foreclose on these properties right now. The foreclosure department gets a bonus for foreclosing on this property. These properties go in. They basically say, okay, great. Well, you know what? AIG has now paid us our full value of 90% on this home. We can foreclose on it and make a profit on it on the market for $150,000, $200,000. That's what's happening. It's a misconception as far as the modification and how they're being handled. Right now, most people, I guess countrywide, basically, as of December 1st, said they were going to basically do a down adjustment on everybody's uh, mortgages. So, for example, if you owe $500,000 on your property, your property is only worth two fifty. countrywide claimed as of December 1st it was going to drop it down near that range and arrange your payment in consistent to what your income is. Well, here's how they take the income information over the phone. You don't have to fax any information over to them. You don't have to send them any bank statements. They just take the information over the phone. They wouldn't be doing that if we would not bail them out when they get in trouble. Exactly. If we hadn't given the $700 billion 
this wouldn't have happened. Which is what I said in the first place. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. More than half of all rescued borrowers, these are the people who had mortgages that were modified to make the payments easier to make, lower the payments, lower the interest rates, simplify the terms. More than half of those people default again anyway. Why are we helping these people? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, buddy? Doing okay. Hey, first time, long time. I just want to first of all say thanks for uh, taking my phone call. Um, you know, I, and, you know I, I agree, you know, partially with what you're saying. You know, for instance, you know, the people who are getting the help and then they're, you know, they're falling bad, bad again, you know, yeah, shame on them for, you know, we help you out, then you go bad again. Yeah, those people shouldn't get the help. But there's other people who need the, the loan remodification just for the, the, you know, purpose of what the economy is now, you know. For the last three years, I haven't made less than six figures. You know, I've managed, at, uh, self-managed at car dealerships, and we all know what the car market's done. It's taken a crap, you know, and no one's making any money in it, you know. At the time, I was seven fifty plus credit, you know, doing fine. You know, twenty twenty five years old, never made less than six figures a year, so I was doing pretty good for myself. But now I'm doing everything I can to make ends meet. You know, I've rented out a few of my rooms to some of my sales guys, and you know, some people need the loan modification just due to what the economy done and what it has done and what the president has put us into. But wait a minute. Uh, the fact is that the people who bought these homes knew they could not afford to buy a house. They knew it. Oh, not necessarily. I didn't do one of those first and second. I did a 30-year fix. At the time, my I, my income was more than enough for, for my home, home mortgage. You know, I was making more in a week than what my mortgage was. Well, obviously... What, what the car market has done with all these dealerships going out of business and everything, and no one buying cars because everyone's so afraid to stimulate the economy, you know, it, it, it's a tough situation for some people. And some people. It may be tough, but the fact is, look, you, you didn't have a guaranteed position. You didn't have a position based on having a, a college degree or having any specialized training. Uh, you had no right to expect that that gig was going to keep going merrily along. Well, then you can say the same thing for all the people crying about the stock market. You know, you. you I, by the way, I, the by the way, by down. the way, I don't think the people crying about the stock market should be reimbursed one dollar. Uh, absolutely. Uh, they, they they should. Is, uh, do you think that everybody who lost in the stock market uh, should be helped along, given a few bucks? Well, I never said that. But what I'm saying is, for for instance, let's say your income this year dropped by. A third of what it is. Would you be able to sustain the lifestyle that you've had? Well, probably because you have money saved up like I did as well, which we have been living off of the, of my savings. But, you know, for, if, if you lost, you know, a, a fourth of your income or even half of your income, let's say half because mine has gone in half. If you lost half of your income, you know, you would be in a tough situation as well. What about the people who are doing the right thing, paying their payments still, moving people in and stuff, but, you know, with the, the turn of the economy's made, they, they're forced to, they don't have much choice. Well, you know, uh, we have had a bad economy before. Uh, you probably don't remember that in the 1970s, the economy, I think, was worse than it is now. Unemployment was higher, interest rates were higher, mortgage rates were higher, and people were losing their houses back then. But we did not. We did not bail them out. Well, I wasn't born in the seventies. Well, then you know what? Crack open a book. How about a little Google? How about a little research? Fact is, we were not bailing people out. Well, you know, I wasn't the one who put the policy into effect. But why wouldn't I take advantage of it? If, if, if it's I'm there? not saying again. I'm not saying that if the policy is there, you wouldn't take advantage. I'm saying we should not be bailing out people who bought houses and had no right to expect to be able to uh, uh, to pay for them. 
Well, see, that, that's the thing. At, at the time, I was making that kind of money. If it wasn't for people putting the fear of God about spending money and just saying, hey, save your money, don't spend anything, don't buy any cars, don't do this or that, I would still be making the same kind of money I did. But now everyone's afraid to go out and spend. You want to fix the economy? Go out and spend some money. Stimulate the economy. That's how you fix yeah, it. Yeah, but everyone's afraid of losing their jobs, and many people already have. Exactly. Especially in the last So what? Should they go out? Should they go out and make another stupid economic decision and buy a car they may not be able to pay for that you're going to be repoing in six months? Let me ask you a question, Tom. What about all those auto workers who are going to be out of work? And sh sh since you know, at the time when they bought their homes, they were making good money. They had good jobs. They had job security. So it wasn't a bad investment. It wasn't a stupid investment. And they weren't taking on a. They weren't biting off a chunk that they couldn't pay. You know, because they've been at their job for a while and they were making that income. And then all of a sudden, guess what? They get laid off. So Where are we supposed to get the money to bail out millions of people like this? Where is that supposed to come from? Well, I didn't set up where it came from. I don't know where. No, no, well, you tell me where it's supposed to come from. You tell me where that money comes from. Well, the money's coming from the tax dollars. Yeah, and who's paying taxes? If you're not working and your neighbor isn't working, who's paying? Well, I never said I wasn't working, so I am working. Oh, you're not making any money. Taxes. You're not making any money, you're telling us. You're crying poverty. It's not that I'm, make, I'm not making any money. I'm making more money than most people my age do. I'm just not making the six figures I'm accustomed to. Well, and by the way, it's only going to get worse. How about college for you? Why didn't you go? I already went there, Tom. And what was your degree in? I just got my general ed done and got my AA. And then I got into the car business. All right, but the, your AA is not a college degree. That's a joke, okay? That's that's your ticket to get into a real college. <laughs> okay, Tom. Let me ask you a question, Tom. People who go to college, spend all that money for college degrees, get out of college, they have a debt to college, okay? They owe, they owe money for their student loans. If they're lucky, if they're All lucky, I'm going to tell you them. is as the economy gets worse, the people with college degrees are going to be working, and Stop people, and people, like, and people quick, like you won't be. Hear me, hear me out real quick, Tom. Where can I, where can I go, okay? For instance, these people who get, get out of college have that, that loan that they have to pay for their student loan, and then afterwards, if they're lucky, if they're lucky, they're getting a job to pay 50, 60 grand a year. Well, I haven't made well, that, that they should pick years old. They should pick occupations that pay better than that. Maybe they should become car dealers. And then because they have college degrees, they're more qualified for your job than you are. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.